you know, I wish I could stop my bloody helmet from misting up and fogging up. And it's not just that, it's my glasses as well. I wear glasses, and they fog the hell up as well. Jesus! It looks sunny and lovely, but Jesus, man, it's cold. And it's not a little windy. Oh, why do you want to go, mate? Uh, so I'm being buffeted all over the bloody road. I'm riding a little bike like this. This is only a 300. It's small and light. You find yourself drifting all over the bloody place. But anyway, my favourite word anyway. I say that a lot on my videos, I know. I thought today... that I would talk ghosts. Ghosts, I hear you say. Well, don't, well, I don't hear you say it, but I'm imagining you say it. Um, I like to listen to podcasts, you know, last thing at night to help me switch off to sleep. I very rarely get to the end of one without falling asleep. But there's one specific podcast that I like to listen to, and that's um, by a guy called Jim Moon. What does Jesus? These words are bumpy. Um, uh, a podcast called Hypnogoria. 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 All one word. And uh, he talks about a multitude of things, you know, from films to books to many kind of genre that's in the kind of um, fantastic, sort of the realms of the fantastic, you know. And he does it in a very uh, humorous way, and it's just a nice, chilled podcast. I really enjoy it. Well done, uh, Mr. Moon, I am a fan. But I was listening to talking, you know, I keep forgetting to bloody change gear. I was listening to um, a bunch of his M.R. James podcasts. Look at these. Jeez. And uh, in case you don't know who M.R. James is, he is um, uh, an old ghost story writer of the early 19th, early 20th century, I believe. It got me thinking of some of the spectral things that I've experienced over the years. Now, I'm not saying I'm a believer, but I've had one or two things happen that have been, you know, like, unusual. And I'm going to relate them for you right now. One of them happened to me many years ago, the black and white days. Well, not the black and white days, I'm talking about the, the mid-70s maybe. Yeah, the mid-70s it would be, because it was um, Stephen King's book, The Shining, which I believe came out in 1975, was it? 76, something like that. But anyway, I was, I, it, my mother bought it, because she, I, I was a fan of Stephen King as well, but my mother was as well. I get my, uh, my love of all things ghostly and phantasmagorical from my mum, I think, but um, I was living at home and I remember this clearly, my mother, I was in bed, I think I was reading, this is the days before Netflix kids, and I heard my mum scream. <laughs> and I was like, Jesus, what the hell? And then I could hear her saying something to my dad, and I was like, so I shouted, Mum, you okay? And she was like, yes, yes, yes. And I thought, oh, okay. I don't know what the hell happened there, but um, I want to think too, didn't want to think too hard about that, to be honest with you. But anyway, turns out she was reading The Shining. And the book of the, 
the story is somewhat different to Stephen King's, um, Stephen King, uh, Stanley Kubrick's utterly brilliant movie. Did I say movie or movable then? I don't know, my lips are so cold. Um, and it differs from it in several respects, but um, one in particular, and in the movie, if you remember, there's uh, an entire sequence set, well, several sequences actually, set in and around uh, a maze um, in the movie. But in the book, there is no maze. It's um, a topiary. Now, a topiary, if you don't know, is um, uh, like a, a series of carved hedges. And in the book, outside the Overlook Hotel, which is a haunted hotel, and uh, the uh, all sorts of crazy shit goes on in there, but one of the things that happens in the book is the book's protagonist, which in this case I think is the, the, the guy, I think, because he slowly goes a little crazy, is walking through the topiary and he suddenly senses movement, you know, with his peripheral vision, and he's convinced that these carved hedges and incidentally they've been carved into the shapes of animals such as lions and and the like um, he's convinced that these are moving but only when he's not looking at them so he only ever sees this movement movement with his um oh jesus his peripheral vision it's kind of a Tense sequence, you know, and they're really well written, as you can imagine, with Stephen King. Even though I think Stephen King's a bit of a plonker. Yeah, anyway, every time he looks away, these hedges, and one in particular, it, you know, I'm, I'm working from memory, this is how I remember it, and, and I'm, I think I'm pretty accurate. But the lion, the carved lion, is stalking him and getting closer all the time, but every time he looks at it, it's not moving, but then he senses some of the other animals moving, so he looks away to see those, and the lion gets closer, and anyway, just as this lion is about to pounce on Jack Torrance, my mother, her lamp above the bed in her bedroom, suddenly exploded, glass coming down on the bed, just at this pretty terrifying moment in the book. The glass falls on the bed. My old man, I think, was sleeping at the time. He wakes up, bloody hell, what the hell's going on? My mother's screaming her head off and, um, and anyway, we put it down to like, just, you know, one of those freaky things that happens. And um, anyway, she read the book. She, she said, right, Steve, you've got to read this. So I thought, right, okay, I will. Now, I'm off school this day, it was in the daytime, and I'm off school, bunking, as we used to call it, I think they still do. <laughs> and I'm reading in the middle of the day, the middle of the afternoon, so it's not, not a creepy time of day. If memory serves, it was sunny too, you know, but I'm reading this book on the sofa in the living room. I'm reading that sequence with the, in the topiary. And I swear, just at the moment where the lion is about to pounce, I'm thinking about what happened to my mother now, right? Because there's this big build-up of tension in the book. It's a scary sequence, man. But I, as I'm reading it, I'm thinking about my mother's experience and just at the exact point that she described to me I hear this noise behind me now bear in mind I'm, I'm sitting on the sofa on the sofa, the back of the sofa is up against the wall so there can't be anything behind me you know what I mean, that's, a, that's what I'm thinking but I hear this sort of slowly escalating 
noise of something moving and what's happening is a large picture that we had on the wall behind the sofa the hook or whatever it's attached to the wall with them yeah it's got to be hooked <laughs> um, must have sort of slowly slid loose and the picture comes crashing down behind me down behind my back and pronks forward and bangs me on the back of the head now I tell you I, I stood up in the middle of the room threw the book on the floor stood up st stood up in the middle of the room looking at this picture looking at the sofa looking at the book just like what the f what the hell just ha happened it, um, wh what do what do I do? You know, I was stuttering like that, but obviously, in my, in my mind, my thought process was, well, I can honestly say I was frozen with fear. I know that sounds a little bit extreme now in the retelling, but you had to be there, man. And especially, you know, because it was so close to... Um, you know, in um, terms of time to when my, my mum had had that experience. Jesus, what a, what a moment. What a coincidence. I mean, exp I know you can't explain coincidences, right? But Jesus, man, you know, when I think about that, I, I, even today I still get the terror <laughs> of flooding back. But that's, that's one ghost story. It's not a ghost story, I guess. It's just a total coincidence, you know. But a freaky freaking coincidence, man. But I do have um, another story. Should you want to hear it, and that was in um, I, th I think it was Stow on the Wall in the Cotswolds, in um, the heart of the beautiful English countryside. There, beautiful little village. And we, st we were just driving around there for a week. We hadn't booked any hotels or anything like that. We were just, whatever we stopped, that looked nice. We'd try and find, uh, you know, a hotel or a B&B. &B. And um, anyway, we stayed in this hotel come B&B. &B. It was only small, but um, we went out in the evening, had something to eat, and said, come back. And anyway, this, is, this happened at about three o'clock in the morning. I'm guessing the time because me and my wife had, my wife at the time, um, had both been sleeping a while, I know that for a fact. Because I was walking up at three, round about the early hours of the morning, let's say, by the sound of little glass uh, containers, you know, makeup, the sort of things you, you know, makeup containers, you know, jars and bottles and bloody all that nonsense. And it was coming from the direction of where I knew the um, dressing table was, where my wife at the time would have been, you know, putting her makeup on and all that nonsense, as I say. <laughs> so anyway, I'm like, what the hell is she doing? It? Effing around with makeup and stuff now. And I, you know, as I'm thinking, I'm lying there thinking, my back to my wife. Holds the best place to lie, I think. Um, I'm like, what the hell is she doing? Why is she up now? And then it just sort of dawned on me that it was bloody pitch dark. And I thought, what the hell? So I turned, turned around to my wife, and she's sleeping soundly. So I get up on my elbows, and I'm like, looking around the room and you know what it's like you can't kind of see shit but you do slowly get accustomed to it and I'm like I can see the the dressing table with all the bits and pieces on there and I'm like what the hell and honestly right the movements and the it, it was like someone was in the room with all that stuff I swear to god It's just amazing for me to think about now, really, even now, all these years later, and it's a long time ago. Anyway, the following morning, we 
we get up, excuse me, we'll look at the road. We get up um, to for breakfast and uh, blah blah blah. And as we're leaving the hotel to shoot off whatever we were going that day, um, you know, though, uh, when you you uh, as I was going to pay for the room, you know, you get those little leaflets and stuff, you know, that you can, see, you know, for local area and telling you about the hotel and all that kind of stuff. Turns out anyway that I can't wish I could remember the name of the hotel. I can't because it's a long time ago. But apparently, that hotel is officially one of the most haunted hotels in England. So I was like, "You have got to be shitting me, man!" I was like, "You cannot be telling me this. I'm not. I don't believe this bullshit." But that day, I believed it. 